Roger Ver and Amari Sachet might disagree on cryptocurrency funding and governance, but they both made some really good points that together I think could be the missing link to the most efficient cryptocurrency governance and funding system that we can create. In a recent interview I did with Amari Sachet, the lead developer of Bitcoin ABC, he pointed out a few different factors contributing to what makes a governance system for a cryptocurrency, including funding, either efficient or not efficient. And he made some interesting comments about Dash. So Dash, for instance, is, a, is an example. Mm -hmm. And even though Dash has more resources at its disposal to, you know, like build its ecosystem and infrastructure than, than say, BCH, it hasn't performed as well. And I think the main reason is because this bureaucratic system is less efficient. So, it, so to, to get like a, a similar level of result, you need more resources in that type of environment. But the flip side of that is that Dash is way more stable than say BCH, right? Like there are, there are no yeah. crazy talk of work every, you know, like years or two years or so. Um, um, like, you know, everybody is kind of like moving in the same direction. Like the project is much more focused. Um, yeah. So, so this is the trade-off that you're making with, with those kind of system, right? They tend to be much more stable um, but they, they don't move as fast, mm -hmm. right? Or, or they need more resources to move as fast. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's, that, that's, that's not government. a trade-off that is new to crypto. Uh, yeah. Or anything really. Governance is a, is a, an inherent friction, you know, it introduces friction, but it introduces friction to avoid worse friction, so to speak. Whereas if you have a centralized system, everything is very efficient, but at some point you run the risk of a centralized system going in a going wrong direction. Your brain. Yeah. Yeah. And then with a completely decentralized or what, what I would say, like a wild west system, then everything can move fast, but then you have a lot of the risk of fighting, which can be very inefficient. And then it's, it's kind of like the, let's just introduce some voluntary inefficiency to cut mm -hmm. down on yeah. other inefficiencies. You're, you're trading you are trading efficiency for stability mm -hmm. effectively now i also interviewed roger veer of bitcoin.com and wanted to get his kind of ideas on cryptocurrency governance and funding and he made some interesting points about market forces and incentives and how this can kind of affect the way developers work and if they work efficiently or not with bitcoin cash i hold plenty of bitcoin cash or, or even dash for example i hold mm -hmm. plenty of that it would be in my economic interest, not for charity, but it would be in my economic interest to pay developers uh, to make Bitcoin Cash's protocol more useful or make Dash's protocol more useful or build the tools to enable more commerce to happen with Dash or Bitcoin Cash or whatever. And so like that's a very clear economic incentive because you know, if if I have, let's say I have a hundred Bitcoin Cash, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I donate 10% of the Bitcoin cash that I have to pay a developer to do whatever. Uh, but the price goes up uh, up by remaining Bitcoin Cash by more than 10%, I've made a profit. So even though I have a, a smaller absolute number of Bitcoin Cash, the total value of that Bitcoin Cash is higher. So like uh, Derek McGill said it exactly right in a tweet a while back. He said like the lack of developer funding uh, in Bitcoin Cash, it isn't, it isn't a market failure, it's a market signal. Mm -hmm. And so for example, from Bitcoin.com, like we have a, a substantial budget every single month that we spend on all sorts of things. We could devote a bigger part of that to pay, you know, protocol developers. But in our economic opinion, with all the moving pieces we can see in the world, that's not the best use of our money. Our, the best use of our money is spent on building other tools inside the Bitcoin Cash ecosystem. So imagine if we still had the same Bitcoin.com wallet from a year or two ago. It's not anywhere near as good as the one that we have today, but we spent a lot of money to build the one that we have today. That money could have been given to ABC or somebody else to do protocol development work. And let's say they did that, but Bitcoin.com still has a crappy wallet. I don't think Bitcoin Cash would be in as good of a position uh, today uh, if we had done that rather than just build, focused on building our wallet. So the fact that companies like Bitcoin.com and others aren't donating money to the protocol developers, that's mm -hmm. market feedback, not a market failure. Uh, yeah. And I think that's an important concept to understand. Now, both Roger and Amari do fundamentally disagree on the issue and how this is going to be handled, which is why at the moment there's so much drama in the Bitcoin Cash community. However, together, they're both opposite sort of points kind of illuminate something that's pretty valuable, especially to Dash. Now, as Amari pointed out, 
Dash does have a very stable governance system because it's really good at actually coming together as a network and deciding something all together. Once and for all, one vote and it's done. Now, of course, the flip side of this is if you gather thousands of actors together to all decide on one critical issue, that does take a lot of time and effort and there's a lot of debate to it and it sucks out a whole lot of energy and effectively, whatever decision comes out of it has to be the will of the group. It has to be the majority decides. And this is great for something where it affects absolutely everyone and everyone kind of needs to have some sort of input. And so even though it's not necessarily a super efficient system, it's very valuable for deciding major governance issues. And without this, we see endless splits like we've seen with the Bitcoins and other coins even. We've seen constant fighting and splits over these big issues. And it seems like the actual separation, the split is the only way to really resolve that after much fighting and inefficiency and things like that. Now, of course, the problem is you take this bureaucratic, stable, slow moving system and you start to feed random things into it that should be probably done by the free market. Like, I have this great business idea or this marketing idea or whatever else, and all these little things that should just be the attention of the entrepreneur behind it and whoever else wants to pay attention and invest and you know talk about engaging it. It should be those people's attention only but instead, the entire network gets summoned to sort of sit down and say, hmm, I'm going to vote on this. Well, what do I think about this proposal? And that becomes very inefficient. Think of it as you're in a company and when you're trying to make decisions, the only way you can do that is do a reply all function to the whole company on your email. Just email everyone in the company and you can't move forward until the majority of those have come and decided something. Sometimes it's just like, hey, this little flyer we're printing, should we change the font here? How about this wording? And you just, then the intern from the bottom pipes in, I want to do this. And then the, the VP of legal comes over and says, oh, well, I don't know about the, and everyone starts having input and eventually you get nothing done and whatever does get done doesn't necessarily work out the best. What you'd rather do is let the people focus on what they want to do rather than summon the whole network for that. So what does this mean for governance systems in crypto? Well, the Dash model is fantastic at a few things, namely, funding developers, deciding which developers should actually be funded, and making any other kind of major governance decision for the whole network, anything that everyone needs to figure out, is probably the most efficient system that we have in crypto for deciding those kinds of things. On the other hand, it's not very efficient for doing things like deciding on marketing initiatives or other things. And unfortunately, the way the treasury system is structured, everything kind of goes through that big bureaucratic mess. And it can be messy at some times. And I think we can see by comparing the other projects just how much energy gets wasted because there's other projects that have a lot more community efforts, a lot more development in non-core kind of ways. There's a whole bunch of things like that going on that is kind of like captured by the Dash governance system in Dash where instead of deciding to start your own initiative, you get sort of pressured or, you know, you know, the one ring of power is right over there. Whatever it is, you decide to go the treasury route instead of doing it on your own. And then if it succeeds or not, it just kind of like sucks the air out of the room. So Ryan Taylor, Dash Core Group CEO, has proposed some change to the way the treasury works where unspent funds, instead of getting not created, they are created, but they're sent to masternodes and miners. So therefore, masternodes, when they're voting on treasury proposals, they actually get to see what has already taken place, which is they're losing money on every proposal they spend. Right now it's kind of invisible because new coins get created when anything gets funded. Masternode coins are less valuable because they're less scarce as a result, but they don't really see that. When they do actually start getting those new coins created, sent to them, if they save and don't actually spend on a proposal, then they're going to start saying, oh, this is costing me money and become much more stingy. Now, while that's a fantastic idea, and I think that's going to push a lot of the kind of extra work out of the treasury spectrum. I don't think that that alone is enough to do anything. So as always, this is a great open source experiment. Lots of different cryptocurrencies are out there. There's a whole bunch of different solutions. And one thing I really like is the concept of a flip starter in Bitcoin Cash, which is basically a crowdfund system. So basically you create a proposal and people fund it via voluntary donations. You set a timeline at which the crowdfund is expired 
And if you don't get your donation goal by the end of that, it automatically gets sent back to all the donors. So it's kind of like a no risk sort of a situation. So I think that would be great ported into Dash because you could have a lot of proposals that now don't get funded, but then you have kind of more entrepreneurial element where people can start initiatives and then easily get them funded from the community. I think that's one thing that could really work out very well. But ultimately leadership has a lot to do with this because I think that if enough people start building projects in the Dash ecosystem that are not asking for treasury funds or public funds or anything that are either trying to do things with a limited amount of donations or they're just, let's be honest, starting a business. I think that that can really help move things forward. The most efficient system in the world is the free market where you have profit motives, where whatever people do, they get to try whatever they want and possibly get rewarded handsomely, possibly not, and market signals guide them along the way. And that has proven very successful in the real world. With cryptocurrencies, we have this unique problem where that works for 90% of things, but then there's this tragedy of the common situation where development funding and also who controls a completely decentralized network. That's kind of up for grabs and then people spend a lot of time and energy fighting over it and that's not productive at all. We've seen a whole lot of loss of productivity. There would only be one Bitcoin if that could have been solved. Instead, we have a bunch of splits, we have a bunch of inefficiency, a bunch of other coins coming up and trying to fight it out for dominance. Explicit governance systems such as Dash's work really well at solving that problem of who pays developers and who makes decisions for the whole network that have to be decided for the whole network. The problem comes when that gets applied to areas that it shouldn't apply to. So what we can do is try to move everything to the world of free market economic incentives and only apply the treasury to where it absolutely needs to apply. But again, this is just my idea from talking to a couple people who are way smarter than me. What do you think? Please let me know in the comments.